The large majority of players on Roblox are playing on mobile devices. That's why it's essential to optimize and design our games with mobile users in mind. And in this video, I will show you guys some little things to boost the experience for mobile players playing your game. So the first thing we're going to do to improve the experience of mobile players is by scaling our UI stroke. And so if you guys didn't know, is that UI stroke, it's the border that you can have around text and frames. And the thing about it, it looks nice, but it doesn't scale on all devices. So say for example, we have a seven roundness, but we look on different devices and it looks a lot bigger and it doesn't look very good. Well, we are going to fix that. And what we're going to do is insert a local script and replicate it first. And as a side note, I am using Slightnik's uh, observe pattern modules. And so out of all of the modules, I'm using observe property and observe tag. I will have some of the documentation and the GitHub to access all the code for these. So don't worry about that. That will be in the description, but I'm going to be using these two. So then in our local script, the first thing we are going to do is get our observe tag and also observe property modules. And then I'm going to get a variable called original or I could just call it OG height, which is original height. And I'm going to set that to 1080. And I will explain more of what this means in just a second. And the final thing we're going to get is our camera. So game.workspace.currentcamera. And so the next thing we're going to do is say observe tag. And we're going to observe the tag with the name of scale UI stroke. So basically we're going to have a tag under our UI strokes and this is how we can identify our UI strokes and scale them. So we're going to observe the tag of scale UI stroke and then we're going to have a callback which is going to have our UI stroke. And then the next thing we're going to do is get an OG thickness or original thickness and that will be the current strokes thickness so thickness and i'm also going to type check this as ui stroke and then the next thing is get a ratio which will be from the og thickness to the og height so then we're going to return observe property and we're going to observe the property in camera and the property will we will observe is viewport size and then have a callback and we're going to have viewport size and then we're going to set the ui strokes thickness to math dot seal and then viewport size dot y times the ratio so basically to explain this code in short we are watching for ui stroke objects with the tag of scale ui stroke and when a ui stroke gets that tag then the code starts watching that and so then we're going to get the thickness before the initial or before we change it. So original thickness, and then we get the screen height basically, which is what this ratio is. And then in observe property, we are listening for changes of the property viewport size in camera. So then when that changes, we are setting the thickness of our UI stroke to our viewport size dot y times the ratio so it keeps the uh, same visual size relative to the screen height and this og height variable right here of 1080 this makes sure all strokes are originally sized for uh 1920 by 1080 sizes so everything will look nice so then in our ui stroke in this frame right here i'm going to have the tag of scale ui stroke just like this and then we can go to our test and see it on a mobile device which it looks a little bit bigger we're going to go into the game and it looks like there's an error it was oh i forgot <laughs> that since this is in replicated first it is being ran like right away so we're going to have to use wait for child for these modules so wait for child observe tag 
and then wait for child observe property. So then we can do that again, head back into our game. And then as you can see, it is scaled perfectly and it looks nice. And so the next thing that can increase engagement for mobile players and also console players is haptic feedback. And basically, if you've never seen it before, it's basically like the... Hey guys, this is Stewie in editing, and I just looked at the haptic service documentation, and it looks like the service is deprecated, and I didn't know about this until after this video. So now we should use haptic effect, which I can look into and make an updated video on but i'm sorry about that i did not realize that haptic service was deprecated until now but let's get back to the video vibration or rumble in your phone or controller now to make this all easy i have made a video on this before it's really old so this is why i'm bringing it back and this is my haptics module which takes care of everything for you with timed rumble start rumble and stop rumble basically timed rumble rumble it has a duration set to it so you send in a amount of time in seconds for it to run and it will run for that uh, many seconds but for start rumble and stop rumble this is made for systems where you don't know how long to set the rumble for so say for example I don't know you just have a system and you want to include the rumble into it but you don't know how long you want that to last for at the start of the system you just call start rumble and at the end you call stop and everything works fine so now let's learn how to actually use this and so in starter player scripts i'm going to insert a local script and get the haptics module and then we're going to go down and say haptics and then timed rumble now, as you can see here, everything is type checked so you know what you have to send in. And so the first thing is the user input type. So we can say enum, user input type. And then a gamepad work, gamepad one works for just about anything. So phone, controller, anything. So I'm just going to put gamepad one in there. And then enum dot vibration motor. And you have all of these different types of motors. I'm just going to go with large and then we have the amount of rumble or vibration i'm not too sure the range on this like zero disables it but i don't know how far you can actually go with it so i'm just gonna say like two and then rumble time i'll make it go for five seconds and obviously if i were to play this i have my controller right next to me it would vibrate and then after five seconds it would go away and it's no longer vibrating so that works just fine obviously i can't really show that in the best way possible but it does work and then let's go to haptics start rumble we can do the same thing with the i cannot type oh user i can't type input type dot gamepad one enum dot vibration motor large and then the amount you could say same thing and then how you would actually stop it is by saying or you know task.wait3 wait three seconds and then haptics stop rumble and i would just send in the same user input type and vibration motor so then it would do the same thing it would start it wait three seconds and then stop very easy to use okay guys so for this next tip i have covered it lots and lots of times in all of my videos but it is still so important and should be went over and that is using ui aspect ratio constraint for your frames your images and everything like that and so in a nutshell ui aspect ratio basically just keeps a ui elements width and height in a fixed ratio so no matter the screen size or resolution it will look the same on all devices so here i have a ui aspect ratio constraint of one for this green one which means we are using one and then one over here we are not using it so let's take a look at the differences for our devices so test we're gonna go here and let's look at iphone xr you can see that there is a little bit of a difference on this red one it looks a little bit more squished and we can go one more old one like a uh we'll just go to an ipad so let's say 
iPad 7th generation and you can easily tell that that square more that square size is no longer here on the right it's more rectangular and it's not keeping that size and we can look on other devices and it's not perfectly the same as like what we would want it so that's why ui aspect ratio constraint is so important and in here if we were to change the aspect ratio you can change it to whatever you would like So the last thing I'm going to do for this video is to create a little ripple effect when you click on the screen like you would see in clicker games or something like that. It's just a little cool effect you can have it to your games and it just makes everything feel a lot more responsive and immersive and I'm just going to add it in as a little bonus. So what I'm going to do is in starter GUI I've had a folder with a pop-up screen GUI in it. So this is where all the frames are going to be stored in. I'm just gonna take it out of there. So we just have pop-up and then we're going to do this by making a module script and replicated storage. And I'm going to call it ripple and we will make it so all devices are able to interact with it. Okay guys, so this is our script done. Basically, when there is input, we are just checking if our input is valid. So basically, our mouse click, touch on the screen, or when you press down an R2 on a controller, that is valid input. Then we're going to create a new frame, which will clone the frame that is in Ripple, which just has a UI aspect ratio constraint and a UI corner. By the way, I also have the anchor point set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That is very crucial for the positioning. And also the size is set to zero. So then we can make a cool burst effect. So then we are going to tween it and we're going to tween the frame size and the transparency. And this size is just predefined. I just pick a pretty good size to choose. And then we are playing our tween. So all we have to do for this to work is require it. So in a local script, we're just gonna get ripple. And then all we have to do is now go into our game. And if we click, we see there is a cool click effect and it'll pop up when you click on a GUI or anything you do, you can click. And then if we go in and test on a different device like a phone, and go back into it we'll see if we click it also has the effect and if we were to use a controller as well it would do the same thing so we go back in i have my controller and i'm clicking it does the same thing so it all works on all the devices and it looks very nice and a very cool effect And so that is it for today's video, guys. If you did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.